Roughly speaking, the center of mass is the point of balance of an object. So if you were to balance it, you would know that the center of mass is somewhere on that line. If you were to take a two-dimensional object and then balance it in different ways, you would find that those lines, there's the first line and the second line, so there's one, one, and two, they cross over at a point, and that there is your center of mass. Um, for three-dimensional objects, you balance at about three different points. Another way to balance, which is easier than trying to um, make it a balance like this, is to hang something. So you can have an odd, unusual shape. You can hang it by a thread. Just hook it to the ceiling, whatever. And uh, directly downwards will be the center of mass. And then you hang it by a different uh, part. And you also find where the actual center of mass is. Interestingly, if this object was shaped inside out like this, your center of mass of an object can be outside of the object. It doesn't have to be a part of the object. So that's the center of mass, what it is. It's a point of balance. In gravitation, um, you can consider the center of... Let's, let's use a different color. But in gravitation, you can consider the center of mass of a system. So you might, for example, have uh, the Earth and the moon. And there's a center of mass uh, for the system if we consider the whole thing. So the earth by itself has a center of mass, the moon by itself has a center of mass, but the two together have a center of mass somewhere within um, between those two center of masses. It actually falls inside the surface of the earth and when you're dealing with gravitation that center of mass is the point about which the whole system rotates. A little bit like a stick with uneven weights on the end if you throw that stick, it'll follow. It won't, it won't rotate uh, in a nice even way. It'll wobble in a crazy sort of pathway that you'd need one of those old spirographs to, to use. It would sort of go like, yeah, no, okay, you get the idea, hopefully. Um, so the center of mass for a system, how do you find it? Um, well, the distance, um, if we call this D1 and M1, and D2 and M2, so the, the center of mass position is that distance, d1, and you have to multiply um, that, that big mass times by that smaller distance. Um, so it's going to be m2 times d2, and that should equal m1 times d1. I guess it doesn't matter whether you start with the big or the smaller mass, but that's how you work it out. Okay, so it doesn't directly tell you how to work it out, but it gives you an equation that you can work it out with. Um, if you know the total length, then um, the, or the radius between them, like we do for the Earth orbiting the Moon, um, the d1 is going to be the length minus d2. So then you can substitute values in and do some cool stuff there to work it out. Now, where we're really heading with this is center of mass uh, of a system um, when you have a collision, and when we're talking about momentum. So here's an example of two balls that are heading towards a collision position and then they collide right here in the center and then they bounce off. Now this seems like a bit too complex system for us to analyze but if we, let's just say we make them the same mass the center of mass will be halfway in between them all the way. So we can see that the momentum, if we're considering the velocity of the momentum, and even though my last x is not quite well drawn, um, this is yeah considering the path of the the velocity. Let's we jump ahead. The velocity of the center of mass, and it's constant. Okay, and uh, during the collision, that velocity is not going to change. Um, because the momentum doesn't change and the mass doesn't change. So that velocity doesn't change. So that gives us the ability to um, do some tricky calculations quite easily. The, the only difficult part is when the angles here are not the same. Um, so for instance you have one ball uh, coming from higher up at a, a shallower angle and another one's just going straight along and then they collide um, and then one of them is going to bounce off at a bit of a funny angle and the other one might bounce at an angle or it might not. You, you don't know exactly how that's going to operate. So you need to use the angles and some vectors to calculate the momentum changes. And that's the only 
thing. Uh, I'll leave that up to you. I don't want to make the video longer than five minutes. Too late. Five o's two.